Today, as you already know, it's All Saints Sunday, but who or what is a saint? A light-hearted poet, Bonnie Day, expresses some thoughts about saints. She writes, angels, devils, saints, and sinners look alike to all beginners. I've discovered much too late how to differentiate. <laughs> how do we differentiate between a saint and a sinner? How can we tell who is a saint? There are no clear markings. Many artists differentiate between ordinary people and saints by putting a halo on the, around the head of a saint. But it's questionable whether saints ever wear halos. I haven't seen any around, have you? <laughs> they're, not clearly, they're not so clearly distinguish, distinguishable today. We usually think of saints as people who have been remarkable for their personal vir virtues. Holy people who exemplify the Christ-like life and teachings of Jesus. In addition to the biblical saints, we think of people like St. Joan of Arc and St. Francis of Assisi, uh, St. Teresa of Avila, Julian of Norwich, St. Patrick, St. Nicholas, and I'm sure you could name a lot of other saints that you've heard about. However, in the New Testament, the word saint is the name applied to all members of the Christian community. That's you and me. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, Paul addresses the Christians in the church at Corinth as saints. And if you know anything about the church that the, uh, in the Corinthians, it was not a good church. He writes, To those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you and I, ordinary Christians, are called to be saints. We may be saints in training, but still saints. But in today's Gospel reading from Luke, Jesus sets the bar for sainthood very high. He says those who are poor and hungry, despairing and hated, will be blessed. He tells us to love our enemies. He says, and this is from the Common English Bible, it's a little bit different translation. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. I wish more people would do that, don't you? We wouldn't have so many fist fights. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks and don't demand your things back from them who take them, from those who take them. Treat people in the same way that you want them to treat you. And that's the famous, what we call the golden rule. The saints lived those rules and those kind of lives. And I, and I can't imagine or, or just I'm thinking about the, the sacrifices and the suffering that, that some of the saints must have endured. By Luke's standard, I've only known a few people in my life that what I would name as saints. But I'm grateful to have known them and grateful that God saw fit to put them in my life as an example of what I might aspire to be. I know who I would like to be because of these extraordinary, ordinary people we call saints. Who is that for you? For the author, John Irving, it was Owen Meany. He opens his book, A Prayer for Owen Meany, and by the way, if any of you have seen the movie Simon Birch, it's based on that story. He says, I am doomed to remember a boy with a wrecked voice not because of his voice or because he was the smallest person I ever knew, but because he is the reason I believe in God. I am a Christian because of Owen Meany. That sentence is the seed of the story, and in a sense, it is the seed of our story as well. All of us believe in God, believe in Jesus Christ, because 
of someone. We saw Christ in the face of someone. We saw or see God in, in, in the actions and the words that they, they, they shared because of someone. We believe in God because of some Owen Meany in our life. We all believe in God because of some extraordinary, ordinary person in our life. More than any other day, All Saints Sunday is a family reunion day for the church. It's a day for pulling out all the old family photograph albums and remembering where we came from and who provided the examples of faith in our lives. It's a time for remembering ordinary people who were extraordinary in their service to God and to others. For me, I like and remember Albert Schweitzer. He was a concert pianist, he was a physician, he was a minister and a missionary, most of all. He spent much of his life at the hospital he founded in Lamborghini in French Africa. I think of Mary McLeod Bethune, a teacher, college president, government advisor, strong woman of faith, single-minded in her determination to work toward equal education for African Americans. There is Oscar Romero, who was an archbishop in the Catholic Church celebrating Mass in San Salvador. He said, if they kill me, I will rise again in the hearts of my people. They killed him. And today his picture stands in countless homes and churches across Latin America. Other extraordinary people that come to mind that I have heard about and seen in my own lifetime, and probably yours, is Martin Luther King Jr. and Mother Teresa. Both ordinary people who became extraordinary through their commitment and service to God. And then there is Mildred Overmeyer. No, you don't recognize that name. She was an Owen Meany for me. When I knew her, she was an elderly widow who attended my little country church out in Indiana when I was growing up. She was the mother of a Down syndrome adult son, and she taught the older adult Sunday school class, my grandparents' class. And I can still see Mildred in my mind. She, she had snow white hair, and she wore it in two rows curled up all around her head, like a halo. At some point in her younger days, it was whispered in hushed tones. She had a nervous breakdown. Anyway, when I was fresh out of college, and one in some mission experience, this 70-something woman was the person responsible for getting me involved in the Indiana Migrant Ministry, and that began my path to where I am today. Once a week, we visited the camps in our county, listening to the migrants. They lived under deplorable conditions. We brought food and clothing or, or arranged other supplies for them. I remember we got a refrigerator for one of them, families. And I loved and admired Mildred. She was an extraordinary, ordinary woman who, just like you, but she had such gentle patience with her adult son with Down syndrome, a patience with the, the migrants and with me, and she was compassionate and, and she exhibited her love for the less fortunate in generous ways. I remember Everett and Eva Norris, my grandparents, who lost their oldest daughter, my mother, when she was only 28 years old, and herself the mother of five little children ages six and under. My grandparents, faithful Christians, grief-stricken and hurting, nevertheless, at the ages of 56 and 57, adopted the three oldest children and raised them as their own. They always told us girls that we kept them young. I don't think I truly appreciated their sacrifice, their extraordinary lives, until I reached the age of 56. 
and realized and appreciated the sacrifice that they made for me and my sisters. There were others, of course, ordinary people whose extraordinary courage broke through their brokenness and in whose faces I see the strength of grace. Saints who have given me a reason to believe. I don't think there is any greater power than this, the witness of someone who calls forth in each of us belief and hope and strength. There is no greater power than enabling another person to see life in a way that gives hope and comfort and gladness and joy. Each of us has sensed the power of someone who has helped us find our way a little, not so much by pointing it out to us, as by the way they themselves walked or walk in this wonderful yet hurting world. The saints are ordinary people, past, present, and future, who have an extraordinarily close relationship with God. They are not perfectly sinless people, nor are they especially powerful people, but they are profoundly connected to people. They are connected people. Men and women who are linked directly to God and to Jesus Christ and to us. Later this morning, we will join with churches around the world as we sing Lesbia Scott's famous old English hymn, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. And the last verse brings home the point. They lived not only in ages past, there are hundreds of thousands still. The world is bright with the joyous saints who love to do Jesus' will. You can meet them in school or in lanes or at sea, in church or in trains or in shop or at tea. For the saints of God are just folk like me and I mean to be one too. I have to confess I'm not there yet, but I also remember that I'm on the way. There is yet hope as I strive on because God isn't finished with me yet. God is making all things new, even ordinary people like you and me. Thanks be to God, amen.